Absolute convergence and the ratio and root tests. The goal is to determine whether or not a given series is absolutely convergent. Okay, so the first definition, a series, so when I write like sum n equals one to infinity a n, just generically like that, I'm really just talking about an infinite series. So an infinite series is absolutely convergent. If, so if you represent the sum of the infinite series as the sum n equals one to infinity a n, it's absolutely convergent. You can underline the word absolute, or the two words, absolutely convergent. That's what we're defining. If the sum of the absolute values of the a n converge. So if that series converges, then we say the original series without the absolute values is absolutely convergent. Now, uh, definition number two, the series uh, sum n equals one to infinity a n is called conditionally convergent. If it converges, if the series converges, but not absolutely. So if the sum a n converges, but the sum of the absolute value diverge. Now, there is a reason why we care, and I'll, I'll explain it as we go. I, if, I, if I give away too much now, it'll be a spoiler. So, okay, let's start with an example. Does it converge absolutely? The sum, n equals one to infinity. Now, this is negative one, and the exponent is this whole formula, n times n plus one over two, uh, divided by, that whole thing, divided by three to the n power. So does it converge absolutely? You look at this and you think, oh no, that's horrible. How do I tell? But if you take the absolute value of the a n, what does this thing turn into? The sum n equals one to infinity. To show that it converges absolutely, we take the absolute value of what's in here, right? So that, that sum, the sum of the, let me just write it out. So, well. That's a lot to fit in an exponent. Well, that's supposed to all be a superscript. And, that, and then divided by three to the n. So what we do is we take the absolute value of that guy, and it simplifies greatly if you do that. What happens to the negative one to that power if you take the absolute value? Yeah, the, okay, remember, the reason this works is that absolute values split up over multiplication and division, never over addition and subtraction. Well, I don't want to say never, but but it wouldn't be a rule for addition and subtraction. So because this is a division problem, you can break it up and make it the absolute value of the numerator over the absolute value of the denominator. The absolute value of the denominator is just three to the n, because it's positive. So the absolute value of the numerator is just negative one to this power, which is just one. So it breaks down to sum n equals one to infinity of just one over three to the n. That is, that is the sum of the absolute value of the a n. Oh, and what kind of series is that? It's geometric, right? If you rewrite it like this, it's easy to see what r is. The sum n equals one to infinity of one third of the n, same thing as one over three n, right? So what's r? It's one third, so this converges, I'll, I'll say it this way, it's a convergent geometric series. Parenthetically, I'll put r is equal to one third, which is between negative one and one. So the series is absolutely convergent. So the series is absolutely Abs, let's see, abs, I need an S in there somewhere. Okay, absolutely <sighs> Let's see, convergent. I'm making sure I spelled it right. I, I get tired and then I spell things incorrectly and I hate that. Or I leave a letter out. Question. What happens to the Well, it's negative one to that exponent that numerator is either going to be negative one or one, right? Depending on whether or not the number in that exponent, so the numerator that will be negative one or one, depending on whether or not the number in the exponent in the numerator is even or odd, right? But if it's either negative one or one, when you take the absolute value of it, it's one every time. So that's, that's why we can say that.
Make sense? Okay, why do you think we care? Do you think if it's absolutely convergent, it'll, it'll converge? The, the original series will converge? That's kind of the instinct, right, maybe? Or maybe you'd want to at least check it. Maybe it's not an instinct, but maybe you'd at least want to check it. Well, guess what? It turns out that it's a theorem. So, okay, what does this if statement say? So if, this is a short way of saying the series is absolutely convergent. If the sum n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of an converges, in other words, if, if a series without the absolute values is absolutely convergent, that would be another way to say it, then the series with just an without the absolute value also converges. So another way to say this in words would be, if a series is absolutely convergent, then it converges. That seem reasonable? So a okay, even a better way, <laughs> sorry, even a better way is absolute convergence implies convergence. I like that. Absolute convergence of a series implies convergence. Okay, so why do we care, or how do we prove this? Why do we care? We'll get to in a minute. Let's see, okay. Would you agree that a sub n plus the absolute value of the a sub n, it's in between two numbers. It's in between two times the absolute value of a sub n. Would, would you, on the right, would you, would you buy that fact? Everybody agree with that? Yeah. And, well, of course, it's bigger than zero. That's all I really need there on the left. Or equal to. Would you agree with that? If, in other words, if a sub n is negative and you add it to its absolute value, you're going to get zero, right? So I need that or equal to thing. And then I suppose I could use or equal to over here if they're both positive. I'm going to use a comparison here to say that the series involving this guy converges. And that's by assumption, right? We're assuming that the sum of the absolute values converge of a sub n, right? So I'll say this. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n, so that entire series converges by comparison to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, of 2 times the absolute value of the a sub n, which of course, since it's convergent, since the sum of the absolute value of the a sub n converges, you can pull that out front if you want it to be perfectly clear. I didn't do a formal comparison test, but if you wanted to do a formal comparison test, um, you would need this part. And then that's step one. In step two, you would say, uh, oh, the series uh, of two times the absolute value of a sub n converges by assumption. Um, and then in step three, you would say, so the sum of a sub n plus absolute value of a sub n converges by comparison. I'm not going to do all that, but I think it's fairly clear that that's true. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, now I'll say next. Uh, note that, okay, we're going to do a, a fancy addition subtraction trick here. So remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show that the sum of the a sub n converges, right? So a sub n would be equal to itself plus the absolute value of a sub n and then subtract the absolute value of a sub n right back off again. Seems kind of stupid, but that's true, right? So if this is true, then the related sums are equal. So just put a summation symbol in front of both sides. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n must be equal to the sum of itself, right? The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the whole thing, a sub n plus a sub n, absolute value of a sub n minus absolute value of a sub n. But you can split apart this series because the individual constituents converge. So this series comes apart. The sum 
of the a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n. I'm going to leave these guys together because we know that converges by the first part of the proof. And then minus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the absolute value of the a sub n. So the argument goes like this. This guy that I've created here, this series we know from the first part converges. This series we know by assumption converges. So what do we know about the difference or sum of two convergent series? That converges. So the sum n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n converges. I'll, and I'll just say in parentheses because it's the sum. It, well, it's the difference actually. Because it is, it is the difference of two convergent series. And that's the result. We, what, what we did was we showed that if the sum of the absolute value of the a sub n converge, then the sum of the absolute, uh, I'm sorry, the sum of the a sub n converges. So absolute convergence implies convergence of the original series. And so that's it, that, that completes the proof. What can we conclude about the, the series from the first example? We concluded in the original example that that series converged absolutely, which, but, but by the theorem we can say that that series converges, right? It converges. It converges since it is absolutely convergent.